And shalom, everyone, shalom. <clears throat> I want to thank everyone for coming over here for this short uh, lecture. And today we actually going to be taking a closer look at the power of religion. This is what we need to be looking at and showing you more, giving you the insight of the background, if you don't mind me speaking on this. And we're going to see the premise of the power and the significance of the premise of the power of religion. And we got to look at what we, we see this. We think about religion. <clears throat> and the first thing that we normally look at is church buildings. That's one of the main things we, we actually remember. Because when we look at church buildings, it, it comes into these, these beautiful edifices, which it goes on. But we have to remember one thing. Even... The Bible makes it clear that he don't reside in those places. He do not reside in those these buildings. So we need to find out how did this strong influence of church buildings, how it pulled us in in men telling us Lord is and God is in this this house. So that's what the what we're going to speak on. And I just tell you something to put where we're going to put closely in our pockets. And I want you to look at this verse in Hebrews chapter 924. It says this. It says Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. This is directly in our Bible. And it's right there in front of us. So people can say they have Christ in them. They can say he's in them or whatever. But the Bible says Christ is not entered. Meaning he's not going to go in. If you saying Christ is in you, when you get to that building, he's saying he going to cut tides. So he is not entered to a holy place made with hands, which are figures of the truth but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. This is the, the issue. The power of religion. The power of religion. Men has built these places. Men has built these places. And we have to really understand what's going on here. So if they built these beautiful figures that appear to be as God is present there. However, Christ already said that he do not enter into these places that is made with hands. The Bible says so, and we see the facts is in the pudding. The facts is there in the pudding because it says, you know, for Christ is not entered into holy places made with hands. In fact, he tells you what he entered into. He tells you this over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we're going to look at this in verse 16. To where we can start running some of this down. It says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Do we know that? It's a question, do you know that? So if we are the temples of God and he dwelling in us, what is the point in the power of religion how they have us going to edifices and going to these buildings. That's the catch. This is the architect of religion. The architect of religion is, is beautifully set up to discourage you from the truth. So first they had to create something that look sacred. The power of religion. So they have to create something that looks sacred. Not as if you driving down the street and you just see another home. Or you see another office building. Or you see another building. You see an edifice. 
that look different. The power of religion can get you. Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 24, I invite you to look at that scripture real closely. It says, For thou hast built an enemy in place, and has made thee a high place on every street. This sacred place. These are built in many different types of religion. Many different types of religion. You can see these buildings and you see them in many different ways. They are many different ways that they have them in. You see where they can make them look different. They can make them look sacred. This is what they do to fool you and to pull you into a doctrine which belongs to what they want to do. They can pull you into Christianity. They can pull you into Baha'i faith. They can pull you into Buddhism. They can pull you into Hinduism. They can pull you into Islam and still keeping you from Christ because Christian is not in the Bible as a good context. But they will fool you in believing that's what it's saying. So they use these different doctrines and the poor people from from these places and they and they can get you in here to where you will sit there and they tell you these people now they have these church fathers they can get you to believe in church fathers in the doctrines that they have developed is the principles is the principles of the law which is a common tradition which one have to be followed so what they do they use these religious rules from these pastors and from these people that people believe is people who actually going to give you the truth. They have the different ones where they give you these religious principles and telling you what the laws is. And basically they use these as priests, fathers, pastors, senior pastors, assistant pastors, ministers, and reactors and associate reactors, deacons, bishops, rabbis, and they set up these religious structures in that format to pull you from the truth. Telling you to call them rabbi. To call them rabbi. Again, we come with the power of religion and they can get people to do it. But if I invite you over to Matthew chapter 28 and we're going to look at verse 8, it tells you exactly what's going on here. It says, but be not called rabbi for one is master, which is your teacher, even Christ. All ye are brethren. But it tells you in the verse chapter up, it goes just one verse up. It says, and greeting in the market and be called men and be called a man, rabbi, rabbi. But the Bible tells you contrary, don't be called that. So why do people do this? Why do people, they able, they can fool people into doing this. In fact, when you look at verse 9, it's a little bit more. In the power of that religion, then it says, And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. One father which is in heaven. But with the power of religion, they can change things. They can get things and 
they can pull you away from this foundational pieces of text to pull away to make you and force you to look at things in a different way force you to reason within yourself so they can sit there and they can tell you to where they going to be lords over you gods in a way when you sit there and you still search scripture it still show you contrary to what's going on because the bible continually shows you contrary to the matter of what's going on in first peter chapter 5 picking it up at verse 3 it says neither as being lords over god's heritage neither being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. But that's another structure for power of religion because people seek to be lords over something that is not theirs. That's the thought, that's the catch, that's the understanding that they push. And they'll get you on many different ways. They get you to get you to believe in things that is actually not true. However, we have sat there and watched them do this time and time and time again. And we sit there and do nothing about it. And we'll sit there and we will reverence them as if they are lords over God's heritage. And they're basically a lover of themselves. In fact, um, Paul said this in Second Timothy chapter three, chapter uh, Second Timothy chapter three, and starting at verse at verse two, it says, "Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient, parents, unthankful, unholy." In fact, it goes on more without. Natural affliction, truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce despisers of those that are good. This is this is what we deal with. Traitors, Haley, high high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. More than lovers of God. And they do this with the power of religion because it's telling you right here exactly what they do. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. But this form that they have is what deceives you from the truth. The form that they have deceives you from the truth. And they have fooled everybody doing this. When we look at um, 2 Corinthians, this just show you the ability that they have and they have control. When you look at 2 Corinthians, picking it up at chapter 11 and looking at verse 14, it says this. It says this at verse 14. It says, In no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Because they can transform themselves into these images to make you project out what is godly. They can project this out. And as it says, so therefore there is no great thing of his ministers transformed into ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. However, that is the power of religion because they can transform and make you think and believe they are this is the power of religion this is the power they have because all they have to do is give you the perception on what is godly and pull you away from what is true. 
this is all they have to do, and they have done this masterfully. In fact, uh, we see this here, and we look at Matthew, and we can see something even very special here, because Yahweh Shai even Spade said this himself in Matthew chapter 24, looking at verse 23. He tells you, and it goes about that building. It says, then providing any man say unto you, lo, Christ, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. And you have many, many people. It's going into a building because they're telling you that's where Christ is. And we already know from the first beginning, when we started, that he do not dwell in buildings or temples made with man hands. But they will tell you that Christ is there. Forsake not assembling of yourselves into somewhere where Christ is not there. Because Paul tells you the same one said that the other one said, he said, do not assemble yourselves unto condemnation. And they assemble themselves masterfully unto condemnation. He tells you even more so what Christ is telling you out of his own mouth. He says, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, which shall show great signs and wonders insomuch if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. I mean, they're good. They so good at what they do. They can even fool the very elect, but they can't. But they saying, but they are that good. So if you don't see the elect, going there and you don't even have to think that it like but if you can sit there and see someone who's always do their studies and everything else and you see them not frequenting these buildings you should think twice these are the false witnesses they close themselves for their appearance and throwing these things up in their heads wearing these other clothes if it was possible these men would be able to deceive the very elect. And they use roads and everything else to deceive you. In verse 25, it says this. And we need to pay attention to this because it says, Behold, remember, I have told you before. So there's no reason for him to keep telling us and keep telling us something over and over and over again. Because he already told us this. In fact, he went a little bit deeper with this. He said, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, remember, he is in the desert. The same as in a building. That's why he's saying the desert, because there's nothing there in the desert. If you go say go forth in the desert, go into the desert, go not forth. Remember, he is in the secret chamber. That's where he is, the secret chambers. He's in you. So when he says he's in the desert, believe it not. Believe it not. So if he's in the secret chambers and we need to remember where these secret chambers are because many of us can't be fooled. Many of us will be fooled. And the secret chamber is the same thing. I beseech thee therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, I that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The secret chamber. So when he say come into the desert, believe it not. We have to remember what he wants us to do and what he said about what is what we have to do. Because these things we know and he constantly reminds us of these things every time. 
in First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 on something we need to remember to know. It says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Remember, he's in the secret chambers. So he's dwelling in each and every one of us. That's presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service, so he can dwell within you. Because one thing you remember is this. When we look at Acts in chapter 7, and we go over to verse 48. It says, How be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, saith the prophet. This is the second time we've seen this. This is the second time we understand this. He do not dwell in temples made with hands. So hopefully that you guys see the power of religion to where all they do and they're showing you these images on what religion should look like through tradition and through culture and will get many of us to where they will deceive us directly from the truth. So these things we have to remember. When they tell you that you need to go to a church building. He's in the, He's there in the desert. Believe it not. He had told you this already. Because many false Christs shall arise and shall deceive many. In so much that they can be so good because you can see the crowds of people going there. If it was possible, they would be able to deceive the very elect. So with this, I want you to keep that always in your heart and keep it in your mind. Because this will always come up against you. And you see, they use these tools to fool you. The building the man, the collars, the robes, the postures, all those things are used to deceive you. They hold their Bible, but tell them to go into their Bible. And you will actually see the truth come out if you have them open it up. So with that, hopefully we start to understand a little bit the power that religion can hold on any person, anybody, anywhere. So with that, I thank you. So until next time, I say to each and every person, I'm Elder Michael Johnson.